Hi, it's uh, Chris from uh, 6th Street Oak Arena. Uh, I'm going to demo today how to make a slab built sweet potato oak arena similar to the one that you see here. Um, it's a technique that I think works quite well for beginners but produces a, a quite high quality oak arena. Um, this is one that I made earlier. Um, and the way this was done is that <clears throat> first thing I did was create a cone of paper. I uh, used a, a little bit of medium weight construction paper, simply you know rolled it up, taped it to create a cone shape. The key with this is I wanted the <clears throat> ball to fit right in there at the halfway point. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this first and, and put a mouthpiece on it and then close this end down and eventually we'll cut this. Take that cap off, take, take this out of the middle and so on so you'll, you'll be able to see that. This is uh, the material, these are the two tools that I used to make that um, oak arena that I showed at the beginning of the video. Again, this part was wrapped with clay. And then, you know, trim down and everything. And then just a slab of clay was draped over here, separate. Let that all stiffen, put a mouthpiece on, go back and eventually add that cap that I made to this end here. We're going to be doing it a little bit different today in that we're going to do it so that it all kind of ends up as one piece. Well, you, you know, you'll see. So this form at one point was inside of here. So the first step in making that is you need a nice slab. So I've kind of got this one started. I made this um, pattern that I know is about the right size that I, for the slab that I'm gonna need because I want it to overlap about an in, a good inch to an inch and a half up here. Um, because we're going to use that extra clay here to close down the top. So let's go ahead, actually before we get, get going on this, I wanted to show you that one of the uh, problems with using a um, what would be considered a drape form for doing something like this is that the clay is going to want to stick to it. Now depending on whether this is made out of wood or plastic or metal or whatever you found that was in this shape, usually it's a good idea to to wrap it with some uh, paper or some way to get it to release. So I go, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And put a little tape on there. So this will eventually come out like that and it'll help get that, get that form out of the middle of the clay, otherwise it's gonna wanna stick in there. Um, this end here isn't, um, or is absorbent, so I don't have to worry so much about whether the clay is going to stick to this. But if I did, I might go ahead and put some plastic over it like that, glue, uh, tape that on there, and then when I cut the top off, it would cut through the plastic, and then, you know, once that was completely cut off, it would allow that top to come off, but it would also keep it from sticking. Like if this was made out of plastic, you might want to do that. So, let's go ahead and roll this slab out. Um, you want to you um, just keep rolling and flipping. Smooth out any creases or whatever that are in there. It's kind of a nice thing to do. So just roll. consistent couple air bubbles in here if you get air bubbles just pop them and press those out those shouldn't cause you too much problem but it is kind of good to get rid of them um, one more time here okay I think that's gonna be big enough so got a nice even slab there uh, the next step would be to take the pattern and cut this out. You can see this slab is quite a bit bigger than it actually needs to be, but 
But I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. We'll go ahead and actually just get rid of this clay here and bunch this up. We're going to be needing some of this for making the mouthpiece later, so. So the next step would be to go ahead, again, I've got this wrapped with my release paper there. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and roll it on there. Probably want to leave just a little bit of room there at the end for um, closing the end. So it just kind of wraps around like that. Swing this around this way. When you get to this point, I'm sure it's fitting on there just nice. When you get to this point, you want to, like I've shown in the previous videos, bevel that edge a little bit. You can actually bevel this edge or that edge, either one works. Kind of see where we're headed there. Take a little bit of slip at this point. Not too much, you don't want to get it all wet. Just a little bit of slip. You don't even really need to score it. And then just roll that over. And that starts to make that nice seam there. A little bit of rolling on that seam is okay, but don't roll it too much because it'll make the clay expand out. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pinch this end together here. You can see this, this kind of texturing or cracking that's happened in the clay. At this point, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Eventually, we're going to be doing a lot of smoothing and different things on that, so really don't worry too much about that now. You don't want to get the clay too soft but or too uh, stiff that it would crack any more than that, but that is just fine. So, make sure that form is all the way down in there. So we've got a little bit of extra clay up here. Um, what I want to do before I start to close this up is I want to mark on the outside where that, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of here, where that halfway point is on the ball because that's where we're going to want to cut it later. So I'm going to push that back down in there and I know that that halfway point is about right there. So I just want to make a mark there so that I know later on that's going to be the point we're going to want to cut it. You want to get that pretty even all the way around so it lines up nicely. So you got that mark on there. Before we do too much more closing on this, I'm going to go ahead and put the, a piece of clay on for the mouthpiece. Um, the way I like to do these is just kind of get it formed out. Again, you can take that and carve it down later. So don't worry about getting it perfect necessarily right off the bat um, from the very beginning. If you put the mouthpiece at approximately the angle that you're going to want it to come out and roll the clay like this, it'll... I'm going to take a little bit of that off of there. It'll kind of get that set up so that when you put it on, it's, it's angled the way you want it. So you're creating a piece kind of like that. In this step, I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of scoring. Basically, you want the mouthpiece to um, come right up to where that seam is going to be. And that'll be a good positioning. Again, this can be carved down later, so don't worry about that. If it looks kind of clunky right now, but we're just going to do a little bit of scoring. A little bit of scoring here. And definitely want to use a little bit of slip. A little bit there. Just, you know, again, try not to use too much slip. It just makes everything get real wet and messy. And, you know, as to where this seam ends up here, it's not super critical, but I think about, you know, it's kind of nice to put it where the mouthpiece is. It gives you, makes it so that it doesn't end up over here. 
So we're just going to kind of put that in there like that. Again, at this point, you're just trying to kind of position it in there. You don't have to worry about melding it together because that's going to actually be much easier once the clay stiffens a little bit. Um, I mean, you can work on it a little bit and take, take a little bit of time there, but um, I'm just going to do a little bit of smoothing on this, not too much. You can see the difference here. Um, later on, like I mentioned already, is that you know this can be carved down into a more desirable shape. So you don't have to worry about all that excess clay there. Basically at this point you just want to get it on there. Make sure it's you know stuck on there good. And do a little bit of smoothing, but just clay's still pretty soft at this point, so you don't want to have to do too much of that. One thing you can do at this point though, and it's kind of nice to do, is to get your airway started. Because if you let this get if this if you let this airway get too stiff, um, later on it's gonna be hard <clears throat> to push this through without the clay, clay cracking. So I like to get it started about halfway. You can always adjust it up and down a little bit, but that at least gets that clay opened up. Gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm just kind of starting to, you know, open that clay up. It'll help it dry a little bit better, and that's good enough for now. Okay, so for this end, you end up with quite a bit more clay than you really need. So what I'm gonna do, I mean, you could close this in a whole number of different ways, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do kind of a collaring technique here. Let it fold like that is fine. And take it like this. Just and eventually we're going to cut all this off. So if you just kind of work it around like that and just get it close to where you know the thickness that it needs to be on the top there. It can um, all those wrinkles and stuff can be taken care of later. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that off just like like that now this all looks kind of rough and everything right now this mouthpiece can be reshaped later but um <clears throat> again once the clay dries a little bit you can do quite a bit more with it you could get in there with a paddle now start to shape it up a little bit just so and then But at this point, I would probably just let it dry and all this can be fixed and filled in later. So we're getting kind of the basic shape here. So the next step would be to um, actually open it up. You could let this stiffen a little bit and it would probably make it easier. But for demonstration purposes, I think it's uh, good to go ahead and do this step right away. Um, you wouldn't want to let it dry too much because the clay is shrinking and eventually it's going to want to crack there. Um, so we've got our mark here. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the fettling knife because we're not cutting through any plastic or underneath there. So I'm just going to cut around like this. And we're going to take that off. There's the ball. Okay. This could be, you know, is going to probably be filled in later. But that gets that end like that. At this point, you can go ahead and pull this out. And there's that clay that we use to make it easier to get that cone-shaped piece out. I'm going to set this up there like that and not futz with it too much. If you notice, like when you push here, that it starts to collapse in this area, you could get in there with a, a tool and kind of open it up a little bit if it looks like it's gotten crushed at all. But really the, the smartest thing to do right now would be to let that dry for quite a while, you know, at least a couple hours, I would say. And then when you come back, you're going <clears> to <throat> score this surface, slip it. You know, I'd probably work on this inside a little bit. Score this surface, slip it. You want to make sure that, you know, that stays nice and round like that. Um, and then eventually 
meld those two back together. What I like to do for that is um, instead of just scoring and slipping and putting it together, if you take a little bit of clay, roll out a super thin coil. So this would be on here, you know, with scoring and slipping, and then just take a really thin piece of coil and work that down in there and take your um, fettling knife and kind of smooth it all together. That'll make, uh, make it so that that seam is less likely to crack, develop a crack or have problems with it later. So once, once I've got those two together, I can, uh, once you've got those two together, you want to let it stiffen again, and then you would go back in and start to make your airway like you've seen in previous videos. Um, this size, I wanted to tell you, is um, obviously if you come up with different sized balls or interior part here, it's going to make different pitches. And I have seen where this method is used to make a, a, a consistently pitched ocarina, and there's no reason you couldn't do that. This is six inches long this way and two inch wide ball, exactly. So six inches this way, two inches this way. And when I put this one on the tuner, it ended up being <clears throat> about a G, uh, A sharp, G, but then once that shrinks, it's gonna probably be like G sharp. So you can see here, that's how that airway lined it up. Lined up. And I did go back in and <clears throat> you know simply do a little bit of carving down of that that uh, mouthpiece just to get it into a more desirable shape. I did that all after the airway and everything was made. The next step would be to go ahead and you know do some sponging on it. Well obviously you'd want to tune it. Um, for that this this will really start to make it look more like a finished ocarina when you start hitting it with the sponge. Uh, the way I figure out where the holes are going to go is just simply by putting my hand where it's comfortable and keeping them there and then taking a needle tool and just marking and then going you know going down and making the holes same thing over here for a 10 hole you know there 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 and then obviously for a 12 hole you'd want to be adding another hole up there and then you have your two thumb holes on the bottom and there's no reason that this couldn't be turned into a 12 hole ocarina. This is actually very similar to the way the Italian ocarinas are made, except that they do this piece and this piece. This is all one piece. And it's done in a, in a hinged press molding process. Um, and then the cap is made separate and they're joined together like this. So I guess that's it for now. Um, good luck on this uh, video or on this project. Uh, email me if you have any questions, but thanks for watching. Bye.